Yes, I spoke to Mr. Lee this morning and I gave her my full support. Well, you tried to talk her out of pressing criminal charges. I gave her an alternative to criminal proceedings. The decision is hers. Well, how exactly does this disciplinary committee of yours work? It's composed of three students and three faculty. Each presents their case along with three other witnesses. Then the committee deliberates and renders a decision. What kind of sentences do you hand down for rape? Since we don't have criminal jurisdiction, we can't incarcerate. However, we can suspend and, if warranted, expel. Has Joe Templeton or Hank Ludlow been involved in a case like this before? I'm not at liberty to say. Hey, Rick, do you realize we're talking about a girl who's been drugged and raped? I'm not unsympathetic. However, I cannot release a student's private records unless I have written permission or a court order. Sometimes the thought of Maureen in college scares the hell out of me. I don't blame you. My education used to mean BAs and PhDs. Now it's roofies and GHB. And deans with confidential disciplinary committees. It's an extension of the loco parentis role of the university. They prefer to keep these matters in-house to save the students the ordeal of a public trial. And to relieve the school of any public embarrassment. The dean definitely did not feel comfortable playing public relations, which makes me think those student records are going to tell us a story. What will it take to get those records? Well, the university will quash a subpoena without more evidence. Yeah, evidence. No evidence without those records. Hell of a catch-22. If this guy is a sexual predator, chances are he's left other victims. If we establish a pattern, we've got our probable cause. Any suggestions? Well, Finn and I made friends with the guy in the campus police department. We did. Nick, the campus dick. Maybe we could appeal to his fraternal sense of brotherhood among cops. Kelly also mentioned a third guy that was in Joe's room. Maybe he's worth a shot. I'll tell you what, at this point, anything's worth a shot. Actually, we came to apologize. We might have been a little harsh with you the other day. You know how it is, boss breathing down our necks, bad day all around. We're not all wide up cops, you know. I'm finishing my criminology degree next month and applying to the feds. My cousin's a G-man. I could put it in a good word as a professional courtesy. Why don't you tell me why you're really here? We need some information on a student who may have caused you problems. Cool. Joe Templeton. You make him for the doer in that rape? Maybe. We like to pull his records, but we're having problems getting past the gatekeeper in the ivory tower. And you want me to ignore university policy to help you make your case? We want you to help us nail a rapist. Off the record, the guy's a piece of work. In fact, I take more calls in that house than any other frat on campus. What's his deal? Last semester, a woman on the swim team claimed he raped her. Why isn't he in our system? She pressed charges through the university's disciplinary board. Any details? Templeton got her drunk, did her while she was in a stupor. Mindy Schumacher. Yes. I'm Detective Munch. This is my partner, Detective Gentilola. Can we talk? Sure. It was a rush party. He started hitting on me the minute I walked in. He danced, and I had a lot to drink. The only thing I remember is him popping me pulling my hair. I must have locked out. The next morning, I woke up with these god awful hickeys. I don't even know how I got home. If you blacked out, how did you know you were raped? I didn't until a few weeks later when I found out I was pregnant. I did the math. It had to be him. I ended up getting an abortion. What else could I do? Why don't you call the police? I spoke with my advisor and a lawyer. Both agreed that I didn't have much of a case since there was no evidence. And I couldn't remember anything. So I filed a complaint with the review board. They found him guilty of conduct on becoming a student. He got put on probation for one academic semester. You run into him since? Yeah, we see each other on campus from time to time. He even tried to ask me out. I slapped him. Now he just snickers when he passes by with his buddies. It's like being raped all over again. Final labs from Kelly's rape kit. In addition to semen, the rapist left behind another little gift, gonorrhea. The gift that keeps on giving. Well, he either doesn't know he has it or doesn't care. How could he not know? Well, some carriers don't show obvious symptoms. Which means he could have infected others. Or still may. We tie Joe to the GHB, we can arrest him. We got enough for a search warrant? Not yet, but we've got enough to secure a subpoena for his records. And if those records bear out Mandy's testimony, that'll give us a search warrant. Let's go. I'm sorry, Robert, I'll call you back. There's your court order, directing you to turn over any personal, academic, and disciplinary files for the individuals listed. You can't just walk in here and invade their privacy. They're not even home. We can, and we are. Sir, please. Get out of our way, squirt. 
Okay, look who we got here. Hey. Blood things. I not bother to change the sheets. Guys. Could be the mother load. I'll take it to the lab. We'll have an answer in an hour. See these graphic representations? Yeah. Each color represents a chemical with a specific refraction rate. The graph on the left shows the breakdown of the GHB extracted from the victim's urine. The graph on the right represents the sample taken from the eyedropper. What do you see? They look the same. That's because they are. The chemical composition of the two samples is identical. We find out who made it, we find out who drugged our victim. Right. How do you make this stuff? The GHB tends to be homebrewed, often using cleaning solvent or paint remover as base compounds. But this batch is uncommonly pure. Whoever cooked it had access to a lab. Thanks. Joe's been a busy guy. Every one of Mandy's witnesses against Joe has a story to tell. None of them flattering. Get some drunk, lures him to his room, the hair pulling, the hickeys. It's like he's following a playbook. According to this, he offered up only two witnesses in his defense, Hank Ludlow and his own father, Joseph Templeton Sr. Now, what's his father doing at a rush party? Uh, character witness only. Guy must have some heft with the university. Oh, here we go. Mentions a chair he endowed at the law school, head of the alumni committee overseeing a building fund. No wonder little Joey got off with a slap on the wrist. Not this time. Go. Hank Ludlow, you're under arrest for possession of GHB, a controlled substance. Judge Templeton. Put your hands right there. You're under arrest for possession of GHB and the rape of Kelly DeLee. This is ridiculous. You have the right to remain silent and refuse to answer any questions. Do you understand? Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you